please. Uh, hi everyone, and welcome to this session on uh, Jugaad, uh, which is um, India's fix-it. We seem to have competition, um, which is India's fix-it mentality of Jugaad, also known um, for making the best use of frugal resources, and that's the negative side and the positive side, which we'll be discussing. Um, as I say, often it doesn't produce the best out-of-the-box solutions, but. Dean Nelson, who's written a book on Jugard, which is here, uh, and you'll tell us about the cover in a moment, um, uh, which is here, is going to be our main focus, and doing a plug for my own book, an updated version of um, Implosion has just come out, and I talk about Jugard and Chalta High in there. So, um, having That's done that... That's Jugard, John. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's Jugard. <laughs> That's Jugard. <laughs> what, fixing it? Fixing the beginning of the session. Well, there you are. That's Jugard. Um, we've got a splendid panel. Um, the person who's uh, spoken most so far is Nishta Gotam, um, a distinguished um, academic turned journalist. Um, we've got Dean Nelson, our author, uh, a former journalist and Daily Telegraph correspondent in Delhi. You've lived there 10 years? 10 years. 10 years in Delhi, um, observing the crazy way that this country operates. Um, and he's now into, he tells me, business intelligence. Whether we get into business intelligence in terms of Jagad or Charter High, I'm not sure, but we'll discover. Um, and last, but by no means least, the redoubtable Amitabh Kant, um, a former bureaucrat, advisor to the Prime Minister, um, who now runs Niti Aayog, India's revamped um, planning commission, though I don't think you'd probably describe it like that. Um, described earlier at a book launch um, as one of India's finest minds and enthusiast for the future of the country. So welcome, Amita. And we have been on these platforms together before, so we'll see how that goes. Um, Dean, very briefly, what made you write this book? Well, I started thinking about it in around 2009. And in 2009, for those of you who can remember, in Delhi, uh, it was a time where the city was getting ready for the Commonwealth Games. There was the new metro being built, a new stations opening, there was a new airport coming up. Um, there was a great excitement in the city and work going on everywhere. Uh, and at, at about that time, it coincided with a time when we were absolutely skinned. Uh, we just moved from a big farmhouse that was a disaster on the, on, on the outskirts oh, you mean of the you city. you the family was good, not India. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and we moved to a cheaper house in Nizamuddin West, a very old house, uh, quite run down. And this house, it, it, it had uh, the, the, the bedroom that our youngest son got. He got the short straw. He got a room that didn't have an, an outside window. So there was nowhere you could fix an air conditioner. And I knew this was going to be a problem when the summer came, but I saw a solution in the Hindu. There was an article by a very old retired journalist, Mr. M.B. Lal, about a homemade air conditioner that he'd invented uh, called the Snow Breeze. And uh, he'd invented the Snow Breeze, he said, because his air con he couldn't afford a generator, and when there were power cuts and outages, his, uh, his air conditioners wouldn't run on his inverter, another Dugard device. So he wanted to invent an air conditioner that would run on the same electricity that could be supported by an inverter. And he built this, the ugliest contraption I've ever seen. It was a, it was a, a skateboard with a plastic dustbin or trash can on top. And inside the trash can, it had, two, it had a tube made of uh, hoops, of wooden, uh, wooden hoops, which each had a notch at a different point in the circumference. And it was all covered in sh cheap sheet metal. And inside of this hoop, he put two stainless steel buckets of ice and a, f and a, f and a motor and a fan at the top, so which sucked the air slowly. But did it work? 
No. It sounds to me like, a, a, like a, a, an Ice Age version of a desert cooler. It, cooled the, it was said to cool the room by seven degrees, which was supposed to be enough. And I thought, that's it, bingo, that's my solution. So I bought this thing, I invested in it, it cost me 6,000 rupees. My youngest son told me it worked in the middle of the summer. And then at the end of the summer, when it was all over, he said, in fact, Dad, it didn't work that well. So it was, it was, it was, it was a brilliant idea. It was a well-meaning idea to help poor people who couldn't afford air conditioners. Uh, but essentially, it, didn't, it was a bit rough, it was ugly, and it didn't work very well. And that was where I first became aware that this was a Jugard, that this was a Jugard innovation, and I was an investor in one. And then you moved on in, in, and you start the book with a rather more positive and successful shoestring, um, the Mangala and the Mars spacecraft, which, I, I, is a, I did, which is a serious, amazing yes, story. Yes, it is, but there is one thing. I, the, the fact that I was work covering the Commonwealth Games at the time is important because at the same time I'd seen this frugal innovation, which was actually very inspiring that this guy was finding his own solution, even though it didn't work brilliantly. I was hearing the word Dugard more and more in relation to the Commonwealth Games. There was, you know, things were collapsing. The roofs were letting in monsoon rains. There was a foot overbridge which collapsed, and a poor fellow got crushed and fell into a coma. And people were saying, don't worry, it will be okay on the day. It will be like a Punjabi well, that's wedding. That's high. That's how well, Charter High goes it, with They were saying that there would, be a, there would be a load of quick fix solutions at the end, and somehow it would all be okay. So I, I was, I was, it made me focus on the idea of Dugard and thinking, hang on, how is it that Dugard is both my ugly, slightly working snow breeze cooler, and is also the disaster of the Commonwealth Games, and more, more recently, the same word was used by the scientist from ISRO who successfully put... A, uh, the Mangalyan Yarn uh, uh, space vehicle into the orbit of Mars. So we had Dugard, this one word, covering a real range of brilliant successes and terrible failures. So it made me very interested in, you know, what is it? You know, what, what is this word Dugard? And the more I looked into it, the more I saw bizarre Dugard contraptions on the roads, these, these hybrid half motorbike, half... Uh, you know, cattle truck things on the road as scooters and taxis, uh, bone shaker bicycles with broom emporiums on the back of them. Uh, I was seeing them everywhere, but I was also gradually coming to see Dugard as not just a series of objects and inventions and innovations, but actually a way of thinking, uh, that it was an Indian heuristic that I was looking at. Mr. how ingrained do you think, how ingrained do you think it is in, in daily Indian life? Well, I think it is very well entrenched because let's face it, what is Jugaad? Jugaad is the triumph of a, of a Majboor man or a woman in the face of um, broken systems and misgivings. As a woman, I cannot get by without Jugaad. Every time I am in, public, you know, in a public space, crowded public space, I have to stick out my elbow so that my breasts don't get grabbed. That's the Jugaad that I do every single moment, right? Now, uh, I have a problem with glorification of Jugaad because essentially when we say, okay, so this thing works despite that, we are taking the focus away from what is broken in the first place. The systems, the structures, they are not working, which is why the citizens or the Aam Admi or Aurat, they are left to their own means. That, all right, we are not going to do this. Institutions are not going to do this, so you are on your own. And this romanticization of Jugaad, you know, this, this frugal innovation and, you know, how ideas are fixing in those gaps, I think that's a bit problematic and it gives a very easy pass to those who have the responsibility of making things work in the first place. But it, a lot of people say that it, India became adept at managing it after independence when things were, when there were huge shortages. So do you think there's a generational change in this? Do you Absolutely. think people are generation or two older than you? Absolutely. Oh. You know, the, the, um, the generation before me was way more jugadu and resourceful in getting things done. Today, we are more aware, you know, my generation 
definitely does believe in following the systems, provided there are systems in the place. And I just want to share a small anecdote. When I got married, I had to get my marriage registered because it was that very year when marriage registration was, was strictly informed particularly for government employees. I went to the Tisazari court. I knew nothing about how the courts worked. It was my first time. And here comes my knight in shining armor, very charming, this uh, lawyer who tells me, Madam, you just give me B Sazar rupee and I'll get it done. Main sab jugar kar dunga. I said, hang on, I don't want this jugar. I went around, I found my way. I spent three hours in, in Tisazari court. I figured out how it had to be done. I paid only 50 rupees to the stamp paper guy and then I got it done without paying a penny to anybody. And a lot of people of my generation want to take that road. We don't want to be lazy. We want to make use of the systems that are at our disposal. I mean, and we're demanding. Um, so, so, so do you want to come in on that? Uh, yeah, I would. I mean, I, I really want to believe that's true. And I'm really glad that you didn't buckle and cave in and you held out. But, I mean, one of the things, like 2016, the biggest uh, viral uh, thread on social media in India was hashtag Jugard Nation. And people were sharing all these bizarre little Jugards, you know, people, women using upturned irons, electric irons to, to, to straighten their hair or, or as hot plate, plates to boil milk, uh, candles uh, sellotaped together to uh, boil a, a pressure cooker, all of these kind of things. And people were taking great pride in it. And, uh, and, and they are funny. You know, they are, they, they're fun to look at. But, and some of them are cute. But they're also rubbish. You know, they're sort of inefficient. They don't really work. And, uh, but I got this sense that People, a lot of people, particularly young people on social media, were uh, embracing this idea that we are, India is a Jugard nation, that this is part of who we are. And I think, you know, the, the hardship and scarcity that you touched on in the early years of India's independence had a huge effect on that, that people had to make Jugards and they came to see themselves as a very resilient people, a very... Uh, creative people that no matter how hard things are we will find a solution and that's the kind of people we are so I think India as Jugad has actually really got under Indian skin um, Amita is it good for India that it's got this reputation or um, before we get into what the government hasn't or hasn't done stand back you, 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 you've created brands you've created um, God's own country for Kerala tourism you did incredible India for tourism nationally you did make in India, and we can leave that on one side for a moment. Um, but you, you, you're, you're great at creating brands. Jugard Nation? Well, I think uh, Dean's book is frozen in time. Because India has moved on, and it's uh, done a lot of great cutting-edge innovative work. If you look at G's low-cost sound recording machine... Yeah, but before we, we were, get into no, that no, sort we'll of thing... No, talk about that. I mean, because uh, it was all done in India. Microsoft Bing was innovated in India. I was in Bangalore last fortnight. Shell's latest technology uh, for converting waste into fuel, all innovated in India. Samsung's entire, entire 4G, 3G, 5G network, entire network has been in, in, innovated in India. John Deere's 60 HP tractor innovated in India. So what India has demonstrated, its great ability to combine innovation, engineering, and skill to provide excellent products to the world. If it wasn't for India, the, if it wasn't for India's pharmacy, the world would have never got medicine at the right price points. The re American multinationals would have insured people would have died without medicine. If it wasn't for India, if it wasn't for great compact car manufacturing, which India has demonstrated, Maruti, Suzuki, would not have been manufactured here. And Suzuki is today exporting Bellano car back, back to Japan. Amita. And Hyundai, Hyundai exports 65% of its car back to the rest of the world. So a lot of cutting edge, innovative work is happening in India. You know, and that is all a combination of great technology, innovation and skills for the rest of the world. Amita, so, that wasn't the question I asked you. We've got another 
45 minutes and 49 seconds, 48 so, seconds, 47 seconds, and we were going to get on to all that. Uh, let me ask you the question so again. Bill, no, hang on. Let me ask you the question again. I know you're having a tougher time than you did on the last session, but let's see where we get to. Is, is, brand in, is, is Innovation Nation, a, uh, sorry, is Jugard Nation a good image for India? I'm not asking you what's been achieved. None of what you've said is disputed. Everybody clapped. We'd yeah. all clap, I think. Is it a good image that Jagad hangs around India's neck? No, I'm it's not. It's I'm not, not talking about frugal engineering. We, we'll get no, to frugal engineering. No, and simply Carl, simply and no. Hmm? Simply no. No. So tell us why now. Well, sorry, no. tell us why no. No, because Jagad is about finding immediate solutions to problems. Whereas India is a far more... It's, it's a nation of innovation. It's a nation of technology. It's a nation of 2.6 million STEM graduates we produce every year who go and produce not only in India but all over the world. So to say that it's a Jugadu nation for everything is not correct. We are doing cutting edge work for the world. But you're that's also, what Dean's, but, but that's what Dean's book, Dean's book is obsessed with Commonwealth Games. Commonwealth Games was one incident. We moved out. We've created some of the finest airports in the country. We are doing 100 smart cities. But along, alongside that, things yeah. are being cobbled together. Alongside that, things are being cobbled together. Yeah. So, what we've, what we've done is, since then, and John, you've, you've uh, traveled to some of these places. You're a widely traveled person. You've seen the Mumbai airport. It's one of the finest in the world. Delhi Airport is one of the finest in the world. Is that a creation of Jugaad? Can I, can I just jump is in? The, is the Delhi uh, Metro I, I, a Jugaad? I, I have a panel that's urging to get back at let, you. Let me just so jump is, in. Let me, is, I'm, is, I'm let me you just, know, I just traveled in the Cochin Metro. Is that a Jugaad? It's high-tech high, high tech technological work. I mean, it's, these are not Jugaad works. Fitting someone's De AC cooler, in his house. Dean's cooler was Jugaad, and it didn't work. Dean's can, can cooler I, can was Can I just Can I just jump in? I, I, you know, I... I, I would certainly wouldn't want this to be, uh, you know, foreigners sort of running down India because I think, you know, there are some good aspects of Jugard and an awful lot of great scientific research and development in India that's certainly not Jugard. Um, what I, what, but, but I, and I would love to believe you, I raised my children in India for 10 years. I want to see India do well, but what I see around me is, and most of my work these days, I, invi I advise international investors on the risks of doing business in India. Beginning of 2016, I think, a load of these investors came to Bombay for a massive event for Make in India. They had the, the cream of Bollywood. Which Amita was in charge of. Yeah, the big B. Uh, they had everyone to impress upon these people how they can do their business and get their things made in India. The stage went up in flames and we nearly lost the big B. Very close run thing. Because the guys running the event didn't actually follow the safety procedure. So although I do see great things in India, and Mangalyan is a tremendous world-class celestial told, achievement. Yeah, Dean, but a, what you also see is cutting corners everywhere you look. And I was and I was sensationalism. And I was then told I was then told that the even, thing. it was not even the main event, some side event on one corner, one little place, fire, well, something got inflamed and it was immediately stopped. It was a it was you know, so the main event was flawless, absolutely. So you come across something, you know, it's like sensationalism by a journalist like you. I'm, I'm no, don't do that. You know, absolute sensationalism you're resorting to. Oh, come on. I'm, the not, you, I'm not a journalist you're, anymore. You're, I'm advising no, but, investors. And they look at this thing no, and they say, let's advise, let, yeah. should we invest in India? You're, and they see the thing go up in flames and they think maybe it's more risky than we thought. Yeah, but I'm right. saying we have, to be, we have to be realistic so, about what really is the case and what we would like to be the case. And we're and not quite and where I'm we also, would like and to be. And I'm also so if, it, if that was the case, Dean, if that was the case, India would not be this year the highest recipient of the far, foreign direct investment in the world, beating China. If, if, that were, if that was the case, India would not have jumped up 65 positions in the World Bank ease of doing business. So a lot, no, has, no, moved, uh, a lot has moved on. Amita, I mean, Dean, you, you Amita, should not... You should not color yourself by your experience of one Commonwealth Games. India has moved on in life and done a lot of cutting-edge work. Amita, that two points. First of all, I'm told, though it may not be true, that a zero was added to the number of people attending that, um, that, that, that event in Bombay. And secondly, 
And secondly, the, the ranking of India for ease of doing business, which you and the Prime Minister and everybody else have made a huge fuss about, is only based on Bombay and Delhi. It's not based on the rest of the country where the problems are. So it's, it's, it's I mean, it's, it's irrelevant. If Bombay and Delhi can't cure things, why else can? No, no, it's uh, not the rest of the country, and no, it's no. only a select group in those two cities. No, it's no, not John, reality. This is, uh, John, uh, intellectual illiteracy of the highest order, I must say. <laughs> you know... You have nothing to do out with of, illiteracy. Out of 13 parameters, two of them, out of 13 parameters, two or three of them relate to Mumbai and Delhi. All of them, enforcement of contract and many other indicators actually deal with the entire country. So two parameters deal with Mumbai and Delhi, that's important export. Those parameters, that, 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 that survey is only based on Bombay and Delhi and that's a fact. Irrespective of that, across countries, you do a, across the country comparisons, India has jumped up 65 positions. Who, how, how can you deny that? We've done well. Uh, appreciate the fact that India has done well in ease of doing I'm, business. I'm not disputing for a moment. Before don't I don't start that running down second. achievements. I'm not disputing at all that you have, uh, you have done enormous amount of work over the last four years to reduce <laughs> the number of government controls. Incredible. You've sent me the list of things that have been done when you were at the Department of Industry. But the reaction of investors is not good. Nishta. No, I, I just want to, um, I, I'm, I'm glad that Amitabh mentioned World Bank because another report says that India, you know, we know that unemployment is a huge issue in this country and uh, the same organization um, that has given us this, this uh, beautiful statistic that 65 uh, position jump has happened in ease of doing business, the same organization also tells us that India needs to create at least 8.1 million jobs every year. And the numbers that we have are 2.5 lakhs. And I'm talking only the official numbers. So when we say that, yes, everything is going hunky-dory, we have done enough, I don't think that that is true. And at the same time, when, you know, and, and I side with Amitabh, I'm not critiquing him. <laughs> uh, that, you know, I, I agree that when we say that India is a Jugadu nation, I think we are doing a great disservice to the development trajectory of the nation because then we are in a way legitimizing these quick fix solutions, which is not right. We need a holistic plan that can give us 8.1 million jobs per annum. No, uh, see, all that I'm saying is, Everything is not fine with India. I'm not saying that everything is perfect with India. Not at all. All that I'm saying, if India was only a Jugadu nation, then India would not be manufacturing Toyota cars in India. India would not be manufacturing I, Tata stop? cars. Can India would in not here? be doing a lot of, lot of, in, lot of cutting-edge innovative work in Bangalore, Hyderabad, Pune. General Electric's low-cost, uh, you know, sound recording machine or Philips. Or today we have. 1150 multinational corporations whose engineering research and development is based in India. That must be recognized. Amitabh, you yeah. know, there is also a difference between cutting-edge innovation and cheap labor. A lot of investors and a lot of multinationals come to this country because they can hire more hands for paying, uh, you know, by paying a fraction of what they would be paying elsewhere. Yeah, but and I think that needs to be kept in yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah, but most of this innovation, like Shell's innovation or Samsung's innovation for 4G and now for 5G in India, is not labor arbitrage. It's all... Technical innovation. But, um, can I just say, I think we'll be selling you people short if this becomes uh, an argument on how well India's doing. I think everybody here wants India to thrive and, and, uh, and become wealthy and succeed. There's no, there's no question about that. But I, I, I'm, I'm more interested in the idea of, 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 of Dugard as an heuristic, as a way people think and make decisions. You know, you, you mentioned earlier on about the Mangalyan uh, uh, Lu, uh, Mars, Mars mission. This is a brilliant example. So you've got, with, with, the Mar with the Mars mission, it was an incredible feat of achievement. The scientists were given a rocket to reach Mars, which didn't actually have the power to reach Mars. So their mission was, how do we get this rocket? It was an old-fashioned polar satellite launch vehicle, 20 years old, that, that took their satellite to Mars. It didn't have the power to get there. And the question for the scientists was, how do we get this satellite that doesn't have the power to get to Mars to reach Mars? 
So they turned to Jugard. They thought, we, we it cannot get there. What we'll do is we'll have it orbit the Earth for a month, for 30 days instead, in an elliptical orbit, to build up momentum, and then we'll fire it at Mars like a slingshot, in the same way that David killed Goliath. I mean, it was an incredible Jugard. Scientifically, it worked. But you think we're even... I mean, I'd argue that the Mangalyan mission is the most important uh, Indian achievement in history. I'd argue that. And uh, even there, it was Jugard. And so I'm interested in how Jugard is a thought process and is a, something and a resource that Indians turn to when they have a difficult problem. That's what interests me, because yeah, I don't think that stops when India's successful or when it's hang, not hang doing on, well. Amita, just hang on a minute. Um, that was first, um, the, the first time it was mentioned here in, in India was some years ago by Carl Ghosn, um, who probably is no longer a quotable source, but um, the guy who was, until extremely recently, head heading Renault and Nissan. And he came here on a joint venture with, Anna, with, with, the, with the Mahindra Group. And Mahindra produced some components and a production line at about 16 or 20 percent below the cost that he, with his French and Japanese um, outlook, had expected. And he said to Anand Mahindra, um, that's frugal engineering. And that was, oh, I don't know, 10 years ago or so. And you've got um, Anand Mahindra in your book. And, and yes. so just t tell us for a moment or two about Anand Mahindra's approach to it, because that's where it started, with applying... Was a, uh, Mahindra wasn't short of money, he wasn't scarce resources, but it was not wanting to waste um, resources that he needed on producing the production line that Renault and, and Nissan needed. Well, he's a, he's, a, he's a fan of frugal innovation, and, um, but he's very much opposed to the idea, uh, the celebration of Jugard that uh, Nishta was, was talking about. And he, he's very much in favour of encouraging his, all of his workers to become innovators and to take responsibility for the work that they do and pride in every success that they have instead of shrugging it off saying it's no big, no big deal. Um, I'd say he's probably as good as it, as good it, good as it gets in India. Um, but he, um, you know, it's, the, the one thing I'd, I'd, I'd interviewed, just before I met Anand Mahindra, I'd interviewed Professor Anil Gupta from Ahmedabad Institute of Management. And he was talking about this idea of an Indian heuristic. And he said, he gave me this example. He said, if you had a, a tablet, a pill, uh, a life-saving, uh, uh, an important medicine, which cost $100 for one tablet, and you had another version of the tablet, which was only 80% effective, but cost $1, then most people in India would have a solution with that $1 tablet that only helped 80% of the people, and nature could take care of the rest. And I mentioned that to him, and he said, well, you tell me. He said, do you want to be a part of that 20%, that 30% that nature takes care of? You know, there's got to be a, there's got to be that idea that, uh, that, that we can accept just good enough, cheap, just good enough products, and not be focused on producing excellence is a real challenge to somebody like Mahindra. He needs excellence. He, just good enough, 70%, isn't good enough. It's not going to help him sell cars abroad. It's not going to help India develop. And it's not something that, you know, that needs to be celebrated. But it is still, for all of that, it is the thought process that a lot of people turn to when their backs are against the wall in India. I was intrigued that, that alongside um, Anna and Mahindra, um, by your choice of other businessmen, um, to quote, um, including the London-based um, Hindujas, yes. who are not always included in, um, how should we put it, serious management books. Um, what made you include the um, London-based Hindujas, who of course own Ashok Leyland here, but not much else? Well, I, 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 knew GP, I know GP Hinduja because he's one of these big businessmen that you occasionally turn to for a quote about you Indian do. business. So, you, you I, so when I was a journalist here, so I, 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 I spoke to him. I'd, I'd met another businessman, K, uh, K.K. Modi, Lalit Modi's father, and he told me this story about the Hindujas. He said that um, when the Hindujas were in... The, the Hinduja brothers made their money in Iran, um, dubbing... Bollywood films into, into Persian. And uh, when they were there, the Shah of Iran was facing uh, a crisis in the uh, potato and onion shortage, and prices were going through the roof. People were protesting, and he, he, needed, he turned to the Hindujas and said, can you help us out? 
And as it just turned out, there was a glut of potatoes and onions in, Ch in Chandigarh uh, uh, and Amritsar. So the Hindujas got all the, bought up all of the surplus that the Indian farmers couldn't sell. And the idea was to drive them in trucks across Pakistan. But of course, at that time, trucks couldn't pass across Pakistan. So they pulled strings and they got the agreement of uh, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto in Pakistan to allow them to drive 1,500 trucks of uh, potatoes and onions across the border. But when they got there, the army wouldn't let them pass. They said all these drivers will be Indian spies. So they, the Hindus had to get 1,500 drivers from around the world in one week. And they did it. But they, they said, you know, that it's absolutely Jugard methods they used to get it. So they took great pride in being... They say that Jugard, Jugardism, as, he, as GP calls it, is a vital aspect of entrepreneurialism, that no successful entrepreneur in India can be successful without having a mastery of Jugard. Amita, what do you think about that? So, uh, you know, since the time we met Mr. Hinduja, uh, I think, uh, uh, Dean, you should look at uh, some of the cutting edge work being done by Indian startups. Uh, one of them is. I was asking you what you thought about that approach where no, Mr. Hinduja says think, that you can't. To my mind, you know, when you talk about Mangalyam, it's not Jugar, it's top, top class technological and scientific work. That's and what to, the, to that's term, what the and to term Mangalyam said. as Jugar is bizarre to my mind, firstly. And secondly, it's a wrong understanding of technological and scientific innovation. Number one. Number two, see, the Western world, I mean, you go to Silicon Valley, it's a very innovative place, but Silicon Valley has no challenges, so you keep innovating for driverless cars. The challenges are in, in India are very enormous. You know, you have challenges of pri providing water, you have challenges of uh, providing seed and fertilizer to your farmer. You have challenge of converting waste into energy. So Indians do, you know, now if you look at it, Indians are doing, looking at a very vast size and scale of the Indian market, a billion market, a market of billion people. And they're, they're all our young startups, 20,000 startups are actually innovating for the challenges and the problems of India. And for them, the market is not one billion people, but the seven billion people of the world who will move from poverty to middle class in the next decade uh, across the world. Now, the Western mind must appreciate that the size and scale of this six, seven people, billion people will actually, when you do it to that scale of market, you are able to reduce prices by technology. And that is what this Ather Energy 22, 23 year old boy, he's just innovated the electric scooter in Bangalore and is running it from IIT Madras. I mean, the price points at which he's done is, is, the, is rated as the Tesla of the scooter world. But the price points at which he has done is unbelievable for a, for a Western innovator. You know, in India you can do it because your size and scale is large. And that is what the Western companies, why are, they, why are the engineering and R&D wings of multinational corporations relocating to India. They are relocating to India simply because they realize that the market is over in Europe and America. The market in India, China, all these markets have to be captured now. And therefore, Samsung, when it in innovated this active wash, it in let me give you innovation by innovation. When it, its washing machine, active wash, was innovated in India because they said that Indians have this very peculiar habit of first cleaning the collar and the cuffs of shirts. So they put a wash basin on top of the washing machine. They innovated in India, and now they're exporting the same machine to Malaysia, Indonesia, all over the world. So the market for them is massive. And this size and scale of the Indian market enables you to do technical, technological and scientific innovation of the kind which is able to make you bring the prices radically Nish, down. Nish. So India has moved on from Jugad. It's no more a Jugadu nation. It's doing cutting edge technological work. It's doing fine world and innovation for the entire world today. And that's why it's companies from all over the world are coming to India. I've, I've discovered a way to stop you. No, no. To get them to... It worked. They applauded and you stopped. <laughs> it's the most congenial panel that so, you have seen today. So, so <laughs> right John, John is an old enemy of mine. Elliot, John Elliot is an old enemy of mine. He said we must do some fireworks here. I didn't catch that. Well, Britain said she's an old enemy of yours and we're going to do some fireworks.
Yeah, there's only friends here, no I, enemies. If, Come on. I shall email your daughter and tell her you're out of control. Can, can, I just, can I just jump in on one thing? Because, I mean, it, you know, I think it's fantastic that there are all these startups. But I, you know, in my work, you know, Western companies ask me, what is the... I'm thinking of investing in India. It's fantastic. The opportunities are great. We've got to be in India. What are the risks if I get in... What if I jump in with this particular company? If it's a pharmaceutical company, they'll ask me... They'll tell me about Rambaxi, they'll say. Rambaxi was fined a half a billion dollars, the biggest ever fine given by the American FDA against any company in the world was given to Rambaxi for adulterating its drugs and faking the test results. The head of the British uh, drugs regulator, the MHRA, came to India and he said, look, we depend in Britain on the savings we make from buying Indian generic drugs rather than buying expensive branded drugs. So in Britain, we depend upon them. Sometimes it's life and death. But he said, the problem is, every now and again, there's a, you, you fake the test results, and we just want you to tell us the truth. So you've got companies that are great, that are doing essential work, but people have serious questions about the management systems and the, 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 stat, the, the standards of manufacturing process. And that's really important. India, you know, all of these great investments you're talking about, oh, I'm, it's music to my ears. I want to see loads of people come to India. But imagine how many more companies will come to India if they didn't have these kind of concerns about these kind of Jugard approaches to management. I just want to make, and this, this is um, entirely a non-expert opinion, but you know, when we talk about that uh, in the startup world, so many great things are happening, and I agree with every word that Amitabh has spoken about when it comes to startups. But on the other side of the spectrum is the infrastructure, social, and economic support to these startups, which seems to be missing despite the grand claims that are uh, government has made. There are people and there are statistics to back them that when it comes to applying for loans and receiving them, there is a roadblock there. Right. So when on one hand we say that, uh, you know, we have moved away from Jugaad, we are not a Jugaadu nation anymore. And I, by God, I hate this word Jugaad anyway. So yes, I do not want this country to be to be confined uh, within within this 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 very pejoratively um, defined uh, you know def defined phrase of of a Jugaadu nation. I also have a problem saying that startups are doing great work. They are not. They are doing great work, despite all odds. Um, I want to move on to, uh, to comparing Jagard and Charter High. Um, this is where Dean and I disagree on the interpretation, which is, which is fine. Um, my argument in my book a few years ago was that if you have a nation which focuses on Jagard, i.e. we can fix it, we'll pull it together, it'll be all right, and, and then believe at the same time in Charter High which means it'll all be all right on the night, don't worry, everything will be okay, then you've got a nation or a company or a group of people who are not gonna succeed because they'll think everything will be okay, why do we try? But you interpret it differently. Well, it's more that I just see them as two very different things. And in a way, I, I see them as sort of diametrically opposed to one another. You know, the, the, the Chalter, High, ha, Chalter Hay has a, a kind of uh, a case of our fatalism to it. Whereas, yeah. whereas I see Jugard as a, as a very active thing. I mean, they're, they're, we've, we've talked, and as well, we've only focused on the bad sides of Jugard. A lot of my book uh, is about the kind of frugal innovations that you see in villages uh, around India, where people don't have access to the kind of high-end products and the, and the labor-saving devices that they may want, and they have to make them themselves. And those kind of things are often incredibly optimistic that people will find their own solutions. There's a can-do American-type positivity to, in it, which I find very moving, you know, uh, not as a model for the, for the nation, but, you know, but as a way that people will find their own solutions, they will rely on their own wit and creativity and find a solution. I, I, I think that's a wonderful thing. But it, you know, and, 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 there's, there's a, and that's what I would call good, the best of Jugard. There's a you know, it's, it's a, it's a well-intentioned uh, thing. But there's a dark side of Jugard as well, which is the more, some of the things we've been talking about, a more venal, more self-serving side of it. Uh, and, but in both of those kinds of Jugard, 
there is an element of circumvention. There is a lot of thought in it. There's, there's, there's good creativity and bad creativity. There's a lot of thought that goes into bad Jugard and corruption. You know, it's, uh, but it's a very active thing, whereas Ch get... Chalter Hayes is a sort of passive, will, you know, what will be, what will, what will be, will be. We'll come to corruption in a moment. I've got a question on Chalter Hay for, for you, Amita. Um, I have a question for you on Chalter Hay. Chalter Hay. Your Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Modi, went to the DRDO, the Defence Research Establishment, um, a few years, of, I think he'd been in power about a year, and he said, um, he said, on this word, Chalter Hay, it is time for you, talking to the defence establishment, to set the agenda. The uh, interpretation of that, I think, was that they were not producing enough cutting edge, useful, quickly, implementable um, defence equipment, because 70 percent is built, uh, 60 or 70 percent is bought abroad. What's your view on that? Do you think the defence, the DRDO and the defence establishment has taken note and on that Chalter Hay is now um, I'm cobbling together things is... No, we should, we should be doing a lot of more research and innovation work in defense area. We should be doing a lot of more defense manufacturing in India and that uh, would... Domestic manufacturing of defense is very critical and a lot of work needs to be done in that area in India. Well, I don't think and I think, and I, I think that's an area where India needs to do really unique amount of work. And it was in interesting the that the Prime Minister should use that, should yeah. use that yeah, phrase. Course. What PM said was the right thing. And especially in that, in, especially in that location. The other thing that we, sh on, on the positive side, before we move on to corruption, which of course we've got to talk about, um, is to, since we're sitting in Jaipur, is to log the Jaipur foot. The, um, the, uh, which one of you would like to talk about, um, would you? I mean, it's an, uh, we had, the, um, no, we had there, Mr. Mehta who heads see, it on the are, platform here a couple of years ago. There are a vast range of areas, uh, John, which, uh, where India's done unique work. I mean, look at India's biometric system of Aadhaar. It's, it's no, but hang on, let's do the Jaipur foot. No, That's what so I asked Jaipur about. foot. Jaipur foot has been truly unique in, and very remarkable work has been done. Uh, and not merely in terms of providing an alternative in technological terms and, and top class technology in terms of ability to, uh, you know, to those who have been impacted uh, on their limbs to be able to set, provide foot uh, at reasonable, very reasonable cost. But reasonable cost of top class technology, not merely for Indians, but a technology which has gone out to other countries today. And uh, this has been, this is something which this, uh, this state has provided for and something really, truly remarkable. It's essentially, my, is, uh, sorry, the, the, there's it's a really... Gokha, I think, isn't it? Yeah, that, there's the really important thing about the Jaipur foot because it, 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 it was kind of, ref it reflected that sort of Swadeshi strain of political thought. It was much more than a, than a product. You know, that it was, it, it was, it reflected this uh, Schumacher idea of small is beautiful yes. and the idea yes. of intermediate yes. technology. Yes. So the, the former Prime Minister, was it Chaudhry Charan Singh, apparently used to keep a copy of small is beautiful under his arm as constant inspiration. And India had at one point two different institutes of in intermediate technology of which the Jaipur foot was, uh, was one of the best examples. Yep. So the idea of intermediate technology was that India at a certain point in the 60s and seven, early 70s wasn't ready for the sort of really developed technology and that people in villages couldn't manage it. So it had to be somewhere in between simple and something that people could manage. Yeah, and it's an amazing sight going to the factory here and seeing the leg, the print of the, the foots being assembled and the, the people coming in and collecting them and going, going away with them. Um, there's a phrase, is there a jagard, uh, which um, I'm told that drivers um, stop by policemen in the street say to the policeman. And if, when they say, is there, is there a jagard, then, they mean, then, then they're expected to be told whether it's 1,000 rupees or 3,000 rupees to be allowed to drive on. I've always found my press cards quite useful for that without any passing on any money. But um, <laughs> it's... Press, press walas are the biggest jagadus in this country, let me just say that. <laughs> is, this, is this not one for the audience? I'd love to know how many of you uh, ha have had a conversation where an official or a police officer has suggested to you that they, they might have a jugard for your situation. It's a, it's a brave one. How many? That's, well, that's quite a lot. Quite a few. Yeah, Thank you. A few. <laughs> but, um, but, but corruption is, is part of jugard. I mean, it's, um, 
Let's do, the let me demonetization. Let's do a demonetization. When demonetization came in, there were all sorts of examples of Jagard being used to, to get round it. Yeah, I mean, my, my, my favorite, you know, which, which shows you know, just how creative and flexible and, and quick thinking people are in India. I mean, we can all remember those long queues outside the ATM machines the day after demonetization was announced. Um, you know, people who were having weddings at that time of year were thinking, how on earth are we going to pay the bandwallers and the caterers and so on? And, in those, and nobody wanted to stand in those long queues for hours and hours. And somebody set up a, a website called bookmychotu.com where you could pay for someone to go and stand in line for you. I loved that. And then the lawyers and the <laughs> bank managers and other people all did, did to guard on, on accounts and things so that money could be, more banknotes could be paid into the bank accounts and should have been. Amita, anything to say on demonetization? <laughs> See, uh, John, I dealt with the digital part of uh, that aspect. And my view was that India was essentially a cash economy. 99% of in, in India was cash. What has happened as a consequence of that, a lot of people have moved towards uh, digital payments. A lot of, lot of, uh, you know, if you look at what, as a consequence of that, what happened was that we were able to create the unified payment interface. The Bharat interface for money came in. Uh, almost 125 banks, now 142 banks get li got linked up. Uh, Paytm came in, uh, Google Pay came in, uh, WhatsApp payment is now coming in. So what happened is that as a consequence of this, a lot of wallets and a lot of digital payment mechanism came in. And today, many young Indians are using their mobile telephony to do digital payments, which is all, to and, to my and I keep making this point again and again, that the way the digital payments in India has grown, we've had close to 600 million transactions, over 1 trillion rupees has been transacted digitally, is given a major thrust. And over the years, the key thing to this entire issue which you keep breaking up and talking about corruption, etc., is about India going digital across departments. And departments must speak to each other digitally and not through individuals. And I think that is what is increasingly going to happen in India's case. The more digital we become, the less we... Consumers must be, and people, individuals, must be able to get information digitally. All the issues must be able to get sorted out digitally. That's a process. That's a work under process. A lot has happened, and a lot will happen in due course. That's the right course of action that we have taken. Um, on this platform, though actually one of the other platforms, two years ago, you forecast that by 2020, uh, there would be no more um, paper yeah. money, there would be men, the ATMs, so, hang on, yeah. the ATMs would, be, um, would, would not be needed anymore. That was 2020. Yeah. Uh, no, at no. the Reisner Dialogue Conference, you moved that on to 2022. No, no. Um, no. What's your forecast no, now? No, my, my view is very simple, that because India is the only country in the world, and I'll tell you, this is one hell of a major technological achievement, uh, that India is the only country in the world with a billion mobile, with a billion biometric. Nobody else has that. No other country has that. And we have now been able to create bank accounts for every single individual in this country. Single family members have bank accounts. We all have started doing digital payments. And to my mind, in the next three to four years, you will see a huge push towards digital payment. And India will be the first country in the world. And I'm saying this again. India will be the first country in the world to make debit card, credit cards, ATM machines all technologically redundant. Every Indian will be doing payments on mobile phones. Before I opened it up, which I'm going to in a couple of minutes, because um, we've only got 11 minutes and 40 seconds left. Um, Dean, you also see Jugard um, being used in the police having extrajudicial killings, um, yeah. um, um, uh, false encounters. Yes. And I want to bracket that because we're, we're running out of time. Sure. Um, with the quick fix solution, and this is a rather different and more sensitive case, of when there's been a rape of the, um, the attacker marrying the victim. So you see yeah. it in a broader sense, and maybe that you and then Anishta could comment yes. on those two things, and then we'll open it up. 
Yes, I mean, it, as I say, I, I, I focused on it more as a, as a heuristic, a way of, a way of thinking, and, and not, uh, we focused a lot here of, on, on India's economic development, but I, I, I have seen what I regard to be a, 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 you know, a terrible impact of Jugard thinking in all, all different aspects of India's li uh, life, including the justice system. So, you know, encounter killings are, I believe, a ju judicial justice, uh, a judicial Jugard. You know, that you, uh, the police, uh, you know, consider somebody a suspect. They don't have the resources to do a proper investigation. Um, you know, occasionally they stage encounter killings. Someone will be arrested, they'll be, you know, they'll be shot, and then it will be made to look like it's, uh, it's uh, you know, they ran away and shot, you know, there was a shootout and somehow they got shot in it. But there have been so many, I mean, fewer now, but there have been, you know, an awful lot of these, particularly in UP, uh, and some other some other states. I mean, some very famous cases, like the Sorabdin Sorab case, um, and also, you know, the rape issue. The rape issue, you know, rape is an issue everywhere around the world. And I'm not for a moment saying India has a bigger or smaller problem with it than anywhere else. But we do have this thing in India where it's not uncommon, it's not unknown for a victim of rape to be put under pressure to marry her rapist as a solution. And we've seen lots of cases, and in particular, there's one terrible case where, I don't know if any of you remember the, uh, the Gudia case in Delhi, where there was a, a young girl who was raped by a couple of fellows, and she, um, she'd been, the, the fellow that was arrested for it had, had uh, raped a woman in Bihar. The village elders had put pressure on him to marry the victim. They'd fallen out, and he'd come to, they'd, he'd sent him free. He'd ended up in Delhi where they'd committed this other offense. So it's, it's a situation where, People are looking for solutions. You know, it wasn't in the interest of the family of the victim for the, uh, you know, because they feared nobody would marry the daughter. It wasn't in the interest of the, uh, the family of the uh, perpetrator to go to jail because his family would suffer. So the solution was they would marry one another. It was a solution for everyone but the, but the victim. Yes. Right, I would like to come in here by, um, and I just made up a word, I don't know how. <laughs> appropriate it is but you know when it comes to our um, you know justice processes you know justice system it is neither reformative nor retributive it is largely trp rative you know so we always try and get grab the eyeballs by doing something so outlandish that it takes the focus away from the crime itself and then because we do not want to do due diligence, we do not have the resources. I mean, do you, you would be surprised. In New Delhi, which is the national capital, we have only one laboratory which does the forensic uh, examination, just one. And compare it with the number of crimes that are reported on an everyday basis, right? So now, what is, what is it that we are doing? We are killing people on the spot. And, you know, our, our films are making it look very glamorous. Instant justice, open and shut. You know, this Singham-like cop who wants to, do, to deliver uh, justice right at the spot has given you a playbook to, to do things like that. And when it comes to rape, the situation is even worse because the moment you tell the rapist to marry his victim, what are you essentially doing? You are obfuscating the violence inherent in that act. You are only seeing it as a sexual act, which it is not. Thank you. Right, we've only got seven minutes. So um, a question in the front there. Ooh. And then one back in the middle there. So yes. Good afternoon. Uh, very brief. No very statements, brief. only questions. <laughs> okay, good afternoon, everyone. Yes, uh, I want to make a quick statement as well. No, no, uh, a quick question. Okay, quick question. So we see, and I agree with uh, Amitabh ji, that yes, India has moved on. And uh, it is developing at a very fast pace. And we could see the number of claps. My question to the panel is, how is it that uh, the media... The, the literature world, the literats of the world can support the great initiative done by the government and not talk about what had happened in the past and only talk about what is happening bad about India. India has progressed. India is doing very, very well. I'll, I'll we want that. support from the literature world as well. Thank you. I'll, I'll tell you what it is. I support my government wholeheartedly, whatever government that is. 
right? But you expect me to be uncritical of what the, the leaks are, I don't think I would be doing justice to, 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 my, to either my profession or my government because a critic is as integral a part of setting the system right as the policy makers themselves. One there and a question please, no statement. Just two quick questions. Can Jugar not be cutting edge and can cutting edge not be Jugar? Okay, you take that. I think that's a, re a really, really interesting question. I mean, the, the, we normally refer to Jugard as being a quick fix solution, and that, and that somehow it's, uh, it's, it's not an, it's, it's by, almost by definition not, an, not a, an optimal solution, but making the best of the circumstances you're in and the materials that you have to hand. Normally, Jugard solutions being ad hoc and improvised are not the product of systematic research and development and system systems of management and systems of quality control. So my own, my own feeling is they, they can be good, but they can never be optimal. Okay, one at the back. Uh, yes, there. Hi, Mr. Amitav. I want to uh, straightforwardly put up a question to you. The next two years uh, is uh, going to be 15th year for my car to get expired. Will a government bring a policy to scrap it up? And I can donate my car for the first time in this India. First. Secondly, uh, you people seem to talk uh, haywire here. You, you do not stick up to the main point, the discussion point of the topic. So please stick up to the topic. What? I didn't hear the question. Amita? Uh, can we have another question over there? Yeah, hi. Uh, to anyone on the panel, now, whether <laughs> Indians do Jugaad or not is a side. Let's assume they do Jugaad. Okay, for one, in every sphere of their life. But Indians don't only work in India anymore. They've been one of the, some of the largest overseas acquisitions. And Indians have bailed out complete loss-making companies like Jaguar Land Rover, Pininfarina, which is Mahindra recently. Now, they've turned these companies around. Now, would you call that Jugaad that turned the companies around? Or is that innovation? And these are established 80-year-old companies which are cutting edge, but they were fledging in every profit aspect. But once they were acquired by an Indian, they were turned around. Now, is that a Jugar sensibility or is that an innovative sensibility that came from an Indian? I... You know, I've been to the Jaguar company in London, uh, in UK, not London, but in UK. Uh, you know, it's, it's got really unique r robotic manufacturing. It's got artificial intelligence, and it's really top-class manufacturing, uh, something which, uh, you know, Tata's brought in into that company. It's really top-class manufacturing, all brought in by Indian company called the Tata's. So it's definitely not Jugaad. It's highly innovative, uh, totally cutting-edge work. Yeah, and, and, and Indian managers have shown their skills. I mean, look at the people that... Um that, that Mittal picked up from the public sector steel industry here and turned his, his businesses around abroad and Tata applying their management to Jaguar Land Rover, picking up designs that have been left behind and not developed by Ford and producing the excellent stuff that they did produce. A question there in the middle. I'd actually like to say I don't believe that either of you have actually understood the meaning of a the bit word Jugaad. I don't think you have understood the meaning of the word Jugaad. You've written a book called Jugaad but you have no idea what Jugaad actually is. Unfortunately, that's what's coming out of the whole conversation. Yeah. Jugaad is not just, it's, it is actually what the, what the topic of the, uh, the, th the thing was today. It was not what we discussed. We haven't discussed anything to do with this. Did, I didn't pick it up. Did you pick Jugaad, it up? Jugaad is a meaning that, we, that you need to get into. You have not understood the meaning of the word Jugaad. You have used it. But you've used it poorly. You have not understood so it. Can I, is, that me or, is that me or all of us? Is that me or all of us? What, what would be your definition of Jugaad? Jugaad? There's no definition of Jugaad, unfortunately. There's no definition for Jugaad. Jugaad is a quick, quick work. And it's not... Okay. 
uh, sorry, uh, we were just allowed to ask questions. Actually, I wrote a whole paragraph about it. Uh, in the meanwhile, you people were talking all nonsense there. Let me let me tell can you we, very can frankly. Can we be a little civilized here? Thank yeah. you so much. Sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, if if you would have been civilized, you would not have used few words you used in the inaugural uh, sentences of your. Uh, this, uh, th uh, this particular... Oh, because I use the word breast. I'm so sorry. Just, I apologize for having breast. Just, just... Uh... Okay, before, no, just before you finish, um, one thing I must tell you is that the book itself has got a Jugard cover. Can you hold it up? Because I need, I need to speak into the microphone. Um, it's, it's, got, it's got a Jugard cover, which if you turn it round, you only get half the word on the cover and the other half on the dust, car, the dust cover. So there we are. We've got 25 seconds to go. Thank you all for coming. Thank, Thank you, you for answering the questions. A meetup, always a pleasure. Nice to have a new star on the platform, and Dean as well. Thank you.